Hey, how's it going everybody? Welcome back. Today on Melanie's Math, we're gonna be taking a look at how to identify number patterns and shape patterns. And as always, if you wanna follow along with the worksheet that we're using, you can find that at the first link in the description below. So let's get a few definitions to start off with. When we're talking about number patterns, the rule is for is how you get, so how to get the next number, how to get next number. That's considered the rule, how you get from one number to the next. And in shape patterns, sometimes we talk about a cycle and I'll just say that that's one full pattern. You'll see what I'm talking about here in a second. So it's like one full rotation through the pattern. So let's look at number one and let's just jump straight to the numbers. 9, 13, 17, 21, 25. So the first part of this question says, what is the rule? In other words, how are we getting from the nine to the 13, to the 17, to the 21, to the 25? Patterns can get extremely complicated, but it's important to first just check your basic arithmetic functions. So check addition, subtraction, multiplication, or division. So to go from a nine to a 13, how would I increase from a nine to a 13? Well, that would be a plus four. Let's check and see if that works for the rest of them. If I go from 13 to 17, that would also be a plus four. 17 to 21 would also be a plus four. And 21 to 25 would also be a plus four. So the rule here is going to be add four, right? That's our rule for how we get from one number to the next. Now it has to work across the entire uh, set of numbers. And in this case, it did. So the second part of that question is, what would the next number be in that pattern? So to do that, launch from that 25 and think, huh, what would happen if I added four more? That would give me a 29. So the next number in the pattern is a 29. And to get there, we had to first identify the rule. And again, sometimes the rule can get really complicated, but always just check your basic arithmetic functions first. Okay, number two says, what is the rule and what would the next number be? So look, we've got two to four to eight to 16 to 32. Check this out. How do I get from a two to a four? Well, I would add two, right? That might be your first guess. But then look at that. If I go from a four to an eight, the add two doesn't work anymore. And from eight to 16, it also doesn't work to add two. And from 16 to 32, it also doesn't work. So this can't be our rule. Our rule is not add two. Um, subtraction doesn't really make any sense here because the numbers are getting bigger. What about multiplication? Is there anything I could multiply two by to get four? Yeah, I could do two times two, right? So let me see if that works. So multiply by two. Well, then what if I multiplied by two, four times two? Okay, that would give me eight. What about eight times two? That would give me 16. What about 16 times two would give me 32, okay? So the rule here is we're gonna multiply by two. That's our rule. And that can help us get any number of numbers in the sequence. So what would the next number be in that pattern? Well, 32 was the last number. If we multiply that by two, we would get 64, okay? All right, so let's apply some of the same thought process, but when we look at shapes and the pattern that they make. So it says to draw the next shape in the pattern. So I'm just gonna kind of say this out loud. Sometimes it helps to hear it out loud and you can like actually hear what the pattern is or what the rule is. So it goes uh, right arrow, pentagon, down arrow, pentagon, right arrow, pentagon, and your brain is probably already trying to tell you what it is. Let me just point this out real quickly first. The cycle is one full pattern. Can you identify where there's a break in the cycle? Well, the cycle would start here and end here, right? It goes right, pentagon, down, pentagon. Then it would start over again. Right, pentagon, what would the next thing be? Well, it would be a down arrow. So the next, shape in the pattern is a down arrow. And sometimes it's helpful to just identify where the cycle breaks so that you can kind of figure out what the next shape would have to be. So I'm going to leave a, a couple other problems down there for you. The bonus one is kind of cool. Try not to Google it. Just see if you can figure it out on your own. Um, but yeah, hopefully this video was helpful. And if it was, consider subscribing to the channel. And as always, thanks for watching and we'll catch you next time.